So this presentation is on evolution and natural selection. So just an overview of what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about species from different eras of evolution, um, the mass extinction periods and those discoveries, um, the, um, the Earth's geological time scale, the GTS, and potential extinction for humans. So the Earth's geological time scale. So what is this? Well, it is a chronological dating using geologic geological strata. And when I say geological strata, I mean using rocks, um, layers of rock specifically, and connecting that uh, with time to understand what layer of rock comes from um, what time. So uh, the question is, why do we need it? What purpose does it serve? Well, since Earth is 4.5 billion years old, we need to you know, divide sections um, of time into these, you know, certain areas. So then we understand how evolution works in its fine stages. So um, on the left is an image of many periods within the um, Earth's geological time scale, as you can see. And the sections of a GTS include the eons, eras, periods, epochs, and ages. So you can see on this timeline at the bottom right, the eons are really big, and then you have the eras that are kind of small, and then periods are dividing with, you know, within the eras, and then the epochs within the periods, and the ages within the epochs. And um, today, what I want to talk about are the six periods: um, the Hadean Eon, the Archean Eon, the um, pro uh, pro pro Proterozoic Eon, the Paleozoic Era, the Mesozoic era in the Cenozoic era. So the Hadean Aeon. Well, this is the beginning of life. It's the oldest period. It goes from 4.6 to 4 um, billion years ago. And basically during this period, it was the forming of the crust, the mantle and the core, also the creation of Earth's mag magnetic field. And during this stage, there was, um, there was a heavy bomb bombardment stage, which means that asteroids and comets were just flinging themselves relentlessly at, the Earth, um, at Earth. But um, the good thing that came out of this was there was a chemical change and it was the formation of DNA. So um, during this stage, um, there was also the formation of the moon. And what happens is that the moon flies at this tremendously fast speed, right? And at, you know, at such a large speed with so much force. And once, once it's full, um, flying at that speed, it's pulled into orbit by um, gravity after it crashes into Earth. So um, the next one I want to talk about is the Archean Eon. And this was from 4 to 2.5 billion years ago. Um, so the start of this um, was the six hour days. And because of changes going on, Earth is still adapting and things are still happening. The formation is still going on it changes from six hours to 24 hour days. And also because the earth was still stabilizing, this becomes the start of seasons. So because of these seasons, earth cools down and this cooling um, leads to um, condensed water vapor and this condensed water vapor turns into oceans, uh, which we have today. <laughs> and also this was the start of life um, for single celled organisms such as cyanobacteria. And for, the, um, for cyanobacteria, they use photosynthesis to receive energy, um, but they don't need any oxygen. So basically they metabolize their own food in shallow waters. And the product of um, the waste is the oxygen and that's going towards the oceans. So they had the great oxygenation event, which means that they had oxygen and iron, which combined together and that, that created the sea floor iron formation and oxygen went into the atmosphere as well. So it was dispersed in many different ways. And then the proto, um, <laughs> Proterozoic Eon um, from 2,500 to 541 um, million years ago. And um, for this one, oxygen um, became toxic for cyanobacteria. So that uh, leads to the death of the cyanobacteria. So now, because these um, cyanobacteria were producing oxygen and now there's not enough, but there's, you know, it's not good to have two extremes. There's an oxygen crisis for Earth. So what happens is that methane is another element in the atmosphere, right? And met methane plus oxygen will equal carbon dioxide. So what's good about this is that this weakens the greenhouse effect, right? Because um, 
I mean, sorry, this is not a good thing. It's it's weakening the greenhouse effect. And because greenhouse effects insulates the earth, you know, it makes it makes sure that it's warm. Uh, well, this <laughs> the planet Earth became frozen for 300 million years. So it's really sad. Um, after this 300 million years, there was the rise of anaerobic organisms, also known as eukaryotes. And during this time, there was thickening of the, o the ozone layer, and that diversified land organisms. And then the Paleozoic era, which was from 541 to 245 million years ago, um, what happened here is that there was the Cambrian explosion. I'm sure you've heard of that. It's the largest diversification of, of life on Earth. And firstly, um, this, this be, the, what, what came out of this was hard-shelled invertebrates and second was fish and third amphibians. So um, if you're wondering, just a little small fact, what humans um, have in relation with amphibians is that we have spines, jaws, and mouths. So that's how we kind of come back together and we're, there's a correlation between us and amphibians. Anyway, um, we have the lush rainforest, um, right? And they, they were thriving and doing well. And then there's global warming effects, which is also known as the carbon affairs uh, rainforest collapse. And what happens is that um, because, you know, there, because of the rainforest collapse, there were coal deposits that were um, burning and it was, it was really bad for the earth. Um, what happens is that the, the domination of reptiles um, come out and then we have the Permian-Triassic extinction, and this wiped out 96% of marine animals and 70% of terrestrial uh, vertebrates. So a lot of life was wiped out because of this. And the hypothesis for as to why this happened was probably a major um, asteroid impact, like what happened to the dinosaurs. Then we have the Mesozoic era, which is from 245 to 66 million years ago. And this is the age of reptiles. So reptiles are really shining during this time. And what happens is that they adapt to the dry land conditions and their eggs were starting to be laid on land. And this is how we come to the evolution of dinosaurs. Um, so firstly, we had reptile like mammals um, with scaly skin and they were herbivores and carnivores. So this is how it developed into um, dinosaurs. And then 160 million years um, for, for that span of time, the dominant land um, vertebrates were on Earth, right? So they dominated that um, Earth. And um, then you have the age of conifers, and they're like seeded plants. And since the conifers store large amounts of carbon, the oxygen content became 35%. And have, there is habitat, food, and shelter for animals, so other animals were able to diversify and survive. And during this time, we also have Pangaea, right, which was the habitat. It's the subcontinent and the habitat of dinosaurs. And then we have the Cenozoic era, and this was 66 million years ago to present day. Um, so this is the most recent um, era. Um, this is the demise of the dinosaurs. They unfortunately had to go, after, and that's the, um, because of the Chicxulub asteroid. And if this is the aftermath of this asteroid. So firstly, since there were dust clouds um, um, after this, this asteroid hit, well, it blocked the sun. And because it blocks the sun, temperatures plummeted. And this created the um, Cretaceous um, Paleogene extinction event, right? So because of this, now we have the age of mammals. So mammals are now the new shining star. And before they were really small furry animals that have to fear for their lives because the dinosaurs were gonna come after them, right? But now they were increasing in size because there was really, you know, they were the dominant, um, um, dominant species, right? So one example of this was, could be an ape, you know? Um, so if we're looking at apes, well, they have habitats and the habitats are the trees, right? But then the grass dominates the savannas and this leads to fewer trees. So now the apes are seeking new food sources and that's how they develop their two legs. A second example is the hominids. And basically, um, you know, where we descend from, right? There, we, they, um, basically the hominids, they sharpen objects with silicon rocks and they use, they learn to use the hands and fingers and use fire to cook their food. So that's how they evolved over time into, you know, what's us today. And then we have the evolution of specific animals. So I just wanted to go into a few. So example one, we have the horse. So it started as the Eohippus, right? And it was really small, tiny little mammal. And then it's, as you can see over, 
many, many years, it develops into a modern day horse. And there are many reasons as to why the neck became elongated, their tails grew, you know, their, their legs um, shaped into um, different structures, um, all because they had to adapt to their environment. The second one is a whale. So it starts right here. Um, let me see if I can use point pointer. It starts right here with the indome highest. Yep. And it goes this direction. So you see as it's growing larger in size, it also, you can see, is becoming a land um, animal into an ocean aquatic animal. And it's known as the Dorodon, as what we know today as a whale. And then example three, um, we have the elephant. So this is a really in-depth one. It, it's focusing more on the trunk the, um, and the jaw structures. So as we can see here, um, sorry, down at the very bottom, um, I'm sorry if this um, bar is coming up, but basically it's a very small little animal and you can see it has a very angled, um, like slightly angled uh, jaw and it's definitely more elongated. And through the years, it kind of shapens out and it um, becomes less um, elongated and more angular. And as you can see, the um, tusks grow out and, and they're not curved anymore. They're coming from under. And this is what we know as the modern day elephant. So natural selection. Well, what is it? Well, natural selection is the process of adaptation for species on Earth. And as you have seen in the previous slides, the origin of each species does not resemble the modern day animal, right? They had to adapt to different environments and conditions, and that causes them to change in order to survive. However, not all species make it in the process of natural selection. And that's where the selection comes into play. So these are just a few examples of the species that did not make it or went extinct, you know? Um, the dodo, as we all know, um, the great auk, the stellar sea cow, the thylacine, and the West African black rhinoceros. So right here on the left, on the bottom left, is the dodo, the great auk. Um, this one is the great auk, the, the penguin-looking thing. <laughs> and um, the, the stellar sea cow is the seal, um, walrus seal-looking thing. So yeah. So um, within this, um, if you look at a timeline from the start of life as we, and to present day, um, you can see the mass extinction period. So I don't know if you notice a pattern here, but it's, um, you know, every somewhat 100 years, not all the time, but you can see from 540 to 445, uh, 360 to 250, 200 to 65. So it's somewhat around 100 years. And there's always these um, extinctions. So what happens is that, you know, maybe like 50% of life goes extinct, right? And then it starts again and new species come out of that, right? And then it's a large amount of life that goes extinct and then more life grows and it grows and grows over time. And that, you know, becomes a new species. So what about humans, you know, extinction for humans? Well, it seems like we're going to be here for a long time, as you probably know, but Scientists say that there's a 95% prob probability that humans won't live more than 7.8 million years and modern day humans have already existed for 300,000 years. So um, along with this, to make our time short, we have to consider the climate change effects and how that's going to, you know, what effect that's going to have on us, right? We also have to consider asteroid impacts. It's unlikely, but it's still relevant and overpopulation, which is a very large factor. So also we have to consider the inflation of the sun. It's very probable, but it's still very far from now. So I just want to leave you with this last thought, right? If we were able to reverse climate change, well, how much longer would we be able to survive? Could we outlive with this extinct, you know, this mass extinction period or like what would happen, you know? Um, thank you for listening.